Around 12,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age, something incredible happened that changed Earth and possibly civilization forever. And I'm sure that some scientists, historians, archaeologists, and maybe even some of you are probably saying to yourself that no civilization existed 12,000 years ago, that humans were still just hunter-gatherers at the end of the last ice age. Well, George Jetson and Fred Flintstone might say you're wrong about that according to a crazy internet theory. Question, what do asteroids and comets, ancient civilization, mass extinction events, flood myths, the rebooting of civilization and mysterious handbags all have in common with those two cartoons, the Jetsons and the Flintstones? A lot more than you probably ever thought. We'll dig deeper into the mysteries of advanced ancient civilizations next on Just Beyond the Shadows. Just beyond the shadows, mysteries, conspiracies, and the unexplained. There's a quirky theory floating around the internet that says the cartoon family of the Jetsons actually occurs in a historical timeline before the cartoon family of the Flintstones. Let me quickly explain. In a 1987 cartoon movie, The Jetsons Meet the Flintstones, George Jetson's young but brilliant son, Elroy, makes a time machine and tries to send his family into the future. But instead, the Jetsons wind up going into the distant past where they meet Fred Flintstone and the Flintstone gang. But here's the catch. That internet theory states that Elroy's time machine worked correctly and it did send the Jetson family into the future. But the future was actually a post-apocalyptic world where humans had been reduced to cavemen because of a cataclysm of some sort. The Flintstones were actually in the distant future, not in a prehistoric past. But that's just a silly internet cartoon theory. That couldn't have actually happened to humans in our past, or could it? According to ideas postulated by best-selling author Graham Hancock and geologist Randall Carlson, it is possible that there was an advanced civilization somewhere in the ancient past. And that civilization might have been wiped out by a huge cataclysm of some sort. And then our modern civilization grew out of the rubble of that past. But that's not what we've all been taught in school. Most historians and archaeologists assert that civilization started around 6,500 years ago in the Fertile Crescent of Mesopotamia. This area lies between the Tigris and Euphrates River and has extremely fertile soil, and historians believe this is where large-scale farming originated. Now, farming produces excess food, and that one thing, excess food, is what gave those hunter-gatherers the time to learn other skills, like stone masonry and stone carving and mathematics. This was the start of the cities and civilization. So it all began around 6,500 years ago with the Sumerians in the Fertile Crescent in what is now present-day Iraq. However, the Sumerians weren't the first civilization as we were taught in school. It started earlier much earlier, around 12,000 years ago at a place called Gobekli Tepe. That's 5,500 years before the Sumerians. In 1993, a farmer in southern Turkey was plowing his field when he hit a big rock that he couldn't dig up. One thing led to another, and archaeologists soon were excavating a huge temple complex. That farmer had discovered the oldest civilization yet found on Earth, Gobekli Tepe. The site that has been unearthed at Gobekli Tepe is massive. It's an estimated 40 acres and it has hundreds of hand-carved stones. It has temple buildings and massive stone pillars. Some of these beautifully carved stone pillars weigh in excess of 10 tons. These carved T-stones and pillars show sculpted reliefs of animals and people and a mysterious depiction of a handbag, but we'll get to that later. Some of the carvings even depict animals not known to the region. Some of the stones at Gobekli Tepe are aligned to True North, which historians say isn't possible for humans of this time period. These scientists say that hunter-gatherers at the end of the Ice Age didn't have advanced astronomical knowledge to do this. Yet there they are. Gobekli Tepe was created around 12,000 years ago. 
and then it was purposefully backfilled with dirt and stone and abandoned around 10,000 years ago. The people just left. They mysteriously left, like the Anasazi of the American Southwest. But why was Gobekli Tepe abandoned? Was it possibly from the effects of a cataclysm that we now know was called the Younger Dryas event? Somewhere around 12,900 to 11,700 years ago, near the end of the last ice age, a huge cataclysmic event changed the Earth. Scientists have proven it. It's called the Younger Dryas event, and it changed the world of our ancestors. A group of scientists called the Comet Research Group believed that a large comet struck the Earth somewhere near the Greenland ice cap around this time and it caused two huge pulses of melted water to quickly flood parts of North America and the Earth. And this made sea level rise nearly 400 feet in a matter of days. Oh, while we're here, nearly every civilization on the planet has a flood legend or a flood myth. The Christians have the flood of Noah. The Mesopotamian civilizations had many, including the famous Epic of Gilgamesh. The Indus Valley cultures in India had flood myths. The Greeks, even the Native Americans of the Great Plain, the Cheyenne, believed that a great flood altered history. Nearly every civilization in recorded history has a flood legend or flood myth in their culture. But why is a great flood important? Answer this, where does nearly everyone today live on the planet in 2023? They live near a coastline. According to NASA, in 2020, nearly one-third of the Earth's 8 billion people live within 60 miles of a coastline. Man has always lived and built cities near large bodies of water on the coastline. Imagine what would happen today if sea levels rose 400 feet within a matter of just a few days. Only one word can truly describe it apocalyptic. And not only would a large comet strike on the Greenland ice cap would have caused melted water to flood portions of the earth and raise sea levels hundreds of feet, but there would have been a huge explosion, a massive fireball, shock wave with dirt and dust particles blasted high into the atmosphere, possibly causing a huge climate shift. This would have also caused a plant and animal die off on a huge scale. But is there evidence of this? Well, in fact, there is. Around the time of the Younger Dryas, paleontologists know that something caused around 70% of all animal species weighing over 100 pounds, the megafauna, here in North America to quickly die off. North America used to have huge woolly mammoths, saber-toothed cats, lions, camels, and even an animal called the glyptodon. This strange creature, the glyptodon, was an armored animal like an armadillo, but it weighed over 1,000 pounds. All of these animals died off quickly. Some researchers believe that the animals died off within just a decade. That apocalyptic event known as the Younger Dryas could have been the catalyst for this mass extinction event, and it would have affected people as well. Just like the Jetsons Flintstone theory suggests, advanced civilizations could have existed in our past, and a huge cataclysm like a flood or a comet strike, or even the Ice Age, could have totally destroyed them. It's certainly possible, and I believe that most of the evidence of this ancient civilization would lie beneath the ocean. As technology increases, we're finding more and more evidence of civilization that was covered as the waters rose after the Younger Dryas event. Off the coast of Japan, the Yanaguni structure is a submerged stone formation that some believe is evidence of ancient Japanese megalithic structures and the advanced civilization that built them. Doggerland is an area in the North Sea near the British Isles where fishing trawlers have dredged up deer antlers, the remains of mammoths and lions, and human-made prehistoric tools. Atlet Yan is a submerged city off the coast of Israel that dates back over 9,000 years. More of these submerged Neolithic cities are out there. Just type in the term on any search engine. You'll be amazed. So it is possible that advanced civilizations were covered by water when the sea levels rose immediately after our last ice age. Ocean archaeology has proven this. But there are also other clues to a prior advanced civilization that might have been destroyed by this cataclysm.
with their survivors heading out to possibly restart civilization. And to be clear, when I use the term ancient advanced civilization, it doesn't mean that there was a spacefaring people in our past, or a civilization that had computers, or that had harnessed the power of the atom. And it doesn't even mean that they were using iron. It simply means that they were significantly more advanced than the people in their region. Possibly having a knowledge of engineering or astronomy or basic mathematics. Maybe they were seafaring people. Who knows? They might seem simplistic to us in the 21st century, but they would have certainly possessed knowledge worth transferring to others 12,000 years ago. Why do some people think that there was a transfer of knowledge from survivors of this apocalypse to hunter-gatherers at the end of the last ice age? Let's look back to Gobekli Tepe for a moment and those mysterious handbag carvings. This is a stone from Gobekli Tepe. These ancient carvings depict some sort of strange, mysterious handbags. And they were carved approximately 11,500 years ago. But other civilizations carved those same strange handbags into other ancient reliefs. The Egyptians, the Assyrians, the Moris of New Zealand, the Olmecs of Central America, the Dogon tribe of Africa, even our Native Americans before colonization used the same handbag symbol. These mysterious handbag carvings aren't proof that the survivors of an ancient apocalypse ventured out into the world to help restart civilization. We don't know what they actually depict, and neither do historians or archaeologists. But why did all these civilizations carve these handbags with their gods? I need to emphasize that these handbag carvings occur all over the earth in different civilizations, different cultures, at different times in history, sometimes thousands of years apart. Maybe these handbag carvings give us clues that long ago, survivors of a lost or destroyed civilization brought knowledge back to the people, maybe in a bag or a carrying case. And they taught these people mathematics or agriculture, masonry or engineering, who knows? I do know that sooner or later, man will discover another ancient civilization like Gobekli Tepe but older, maybe one that goes back 15 to 20,000 years. And I'm sure that archaeologists like they do today, or historians like they do today, will immediately try to refute and disprove these discoveries. If I'm still around when it happens, I'm just going to laugh and say that the Jetsons came before the Flintstones. <laughs>